want to give you a quick little story time for Taurus and or Second Cross, uh, Second House Cross Watcher. Feel free to reach out for one on one reading or if you want to learn how to read tarot professionally as a source of side income. So, Sting, the wrestler, his last match was yesterday, 3 3 2024. In my mind, I have condensed 2024 to the number 8, which is interesting. This is numerology we're talking about now because it's number eight year. That bodes well for money, finances, career path, expansion, abundance, growth, learning, all that stuff. But three, three slash eight. So the threes in like ancient hermetic numerology, the three faces this way. You take another three. You put two threes together. Hence, March 3rd was yesterday, Sunday at the time of this recording. Slash eight for 2024, right? Two plus two plus four. So we have three, three instead of 2024, three, three, eight is the date. Why is that significant? Well, you're putting one, three, the first three, March, and then second three, third of March, bam, together. That forms eight, aka 2024. Add those up, eight. So we have an eight here. That is the number, the symbolism the Freudian unconscious association with the butterfly, which is the resurrection or the rebirth, right? Or the enlightenment, which happens as we're born into this world, as we're born out of this world, and even in this world, right? We have seven year life cycles. I'm going to be 35 in April. That's going to be my fifth life cycle, essentially. It's broken up into years of seven, right? Sting, his symbols are the crow. And the scorpion, okay? In the tarot, you have the journey of Scorpio the scorpion traveling, evolving spiritually to the eagle. The eagle and the crow are interchangeable in this layout that I'm speaking to right now. In bygone eras and civilizations, cultures, it's also referenced the scorpion is known as the snake. The snake turns into the dragon or the caterpillar, the caterpillar goes into the cocoon, death, resurrection, comes out the butterfly. What did we say the number eight was? A Freudian unconscious symbol for the butterfly. So Sting, he's, his character is based on, and I'm telling you all this because it's dope as fuck and some mystical shit happened to me. His character is based on Brandon Lee's The Crow, who died due to, I believe, a stunt gun. Um, on set of filming Crow in the 90s. Bruce Lee's son, okay, who also mysteriously passed. The Crow, in the movie, the character undergoes death and comes back via mystical experience to this kind of half-undead uh, anti-hero that could be shot, be hit, be punched, and, and doesn't die. Staying in his career underwent this birth, death, resurrection when he turned from surfer sting to crow sting. Okay. So art imitates life, life imitates art. We in our lifetime undergo go birth, death, undergo birth, death, and uh, rebirth or enlightenment or resurrection. Fun, interesting fact, fun fact, uh, The Undertaker, another wrestler, represented death, right? The Undertaker is somebody that takes the bodies into the mausoleum or buries them into the graveyard. He and Sting never wrestled each other. And it dawned on me last night why. I'll tell you in a second. Why Sting and The Undertaker never wrestled. And in a weird way, thank you, Vince McMahon. I was awoken at 10.40 yesterday, approximately, p.m., Sunday, 3.3, the same night as Sting's last match, which I didn't watch. wasn't interested. I'm still watching old WCWs. It was one of those dreams where you had a fight to wake up. I was frozen, sleep paralysis. I woke up like, like that. And like looking, I thought I saw a shadowy man figure. It was just my current blinds hitting up against the wall. I thought it was gonna be scary, something that I saw. Divine timing, direct timing, as to why did I wake up in that moment, why? Perfect sequence timing, for what I'm about to reveal to you. What I do see, 
along from my curtains being casted onto my wall, which I thought was like the shoulders and the head or something, but it wasn't. It was just my curtains upon further review. Was a bird a crow on a wire the shadow of one cast it against my wall just above and under or just to the side and under my fire alarm my smoke detector a bird perched here was going like this out of view I'm like what am I looking at and it dawned on me I'm looking at a shadow of a crow being casted a light was behind him outside he was standing on like a telephone wire the light casted his shadow into my room. That's never happened before in my life. That is some mystical shit. Sting's last match. I wake up like that in such a weird way and see a crow shadow on my... I can't make this up. I then think of all these kind of symbolisms and... I, in a weird way, I think that that sting or the spirit that imbues sting, this kind of Freudian cosmology, this unconscious collective understanding, the end of an era, I take that as him saying bye. Bye-bye. Thanks for an awesome career. And me, as I whisper to myself, thank you, sting, in that moment. It dawns on me why him and Taker never had a match. Well, because they represent the same process. Death and resurrection. Death and rebirth. Taker is the spectrum of death. Sting is the spectrum of resurrection, right? We said the caterpillar to the butterfly. The scorpion to his his other symbol was the scorpion and versus his other symbol the crow the crow to the scorpion or in the tarot the path of the zodiac sign scorpio which moves from unenlightened scorpion in history or in civil uh in ancient culture it's also interchangeable with the snake which we said turns into the dragon in the tarot it's the journey of scorpio the scorpion the higher, more spiritually realized form of that path, an enlightened Scorpio, symbolized in the tarot by the eagle. You will see it featured on the world card in the Will of Fortune. <clears throat> some heavy, heavy kind of boxes were checking, some epochs were ending, some eras, the icon sting. His last match being yesterday, the same night that that happened. I just think that it's just not only celebrating him, but just I really do think we're all collectively moving into some great times ahead. And I'm very happy and excited and grateful for all of this. And that mystical experience, a straight up mystical experience that I cannot make up. Never in my life have I seen a bird casted shadow into my room from my blinds that were closed. It was all too much. It was insane. Deeper meaning, deeper belief. Also, I went to go play basketball yesterday and it poured raining when I got there for a good like 15 minutes. And then the sun came out and dried everything up. I had a great day shooting and I found my shot. I found my basketball shot today or yesterday. It's been crazy. It's, I can't make this stuff up. I love it. All right, that was for you, Taurus. Um, let's roll this on over to Gemini and our third house cross-launch.